Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about fleet enema poisoning in cats. Now, you're probably thinking, enemas? Why would I even tune in? Well, if you have a cat, chances are, as your cat gets older, you're going to have to battle with a potential common problem called constipation. So, sounds dirty, but a really important topic. So, we'll be right back after these messages. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the dangers when it comes to the back end of your cat. I'm going to be talking about fleet enema poisoning in cats. And you're probably thinking, fleet enemas? What the heck is that? Fleet enema poisoning is when I see really well-intentioned cat owners administering a fleet enema at home or very, very rarely veterinarians doing it. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet called Constipation in Cats, I talked all about things related to your cat's fecal habits. And I'll briefly talk on that today, but I want you to go back to that episode to check that out. Now, most of the time, I know that checking your cat's litter box to see how hard or how soft the feces is probably isn't on your top three things that you want to do for the day, but it's really important. Now, cat constipation isn't normal, and it's mostly seen in cats, not in dogs. When do I see it as an ER vet? Well, mostly when cats start to become middle-aged to geriatric. Why do we see constipation? Well, first of all, it's not normal and it's usually preventable. This is actually one of the reasons why I'm a huge advocate of feeding canned food to cats. On a side note, when you buy canned food, you're really paying for 70% water that makes that food soft. So when in doubt, I'm a big fan and I always like to start cats on both the dry food and a gruel down canned food to help teach them to eat more water. When I see constipation, it's usually because there's underlying medical problems and it's related to water balance. So if your cat has underlying chronic kidney disease or they're chronically dehydrated or they have diabetes or medical problem that prevents them from being able to have appropriate water balance, you can see constipation more. If you had a kitten that may have had pelvic problems, maybe they had some type of trauma, they were hit by a car when they were younger, as those fractures start to heal, that can actually result in a narrowing or pressure on their colon, resulting in a potential stricture or problems with the innervation to that back area. Now, again, cat constipation isn't normal, and it can actually become really severe. It can actually progress to an abnormal enlargement of the colon called megacolon. You don't want to deal with megacolon. It is chronically a pain to treat. It can be costly, and there aren't a lot of surgical options for it. So it's mostly medical management. So let's talk first about the signs of constipation. If you notice that you're scooping the kitty litter and the fecal balls in there seem really, really dry, or if your cat's making multiple trips to the litter box or taking longer in the litter box, maybe your cat is straining or crying while they're trying to defecate, you definitely want to check your cat's kitty litter habits. 
Now, most of the time in the ER, I'm diagnosing constipation based on physical examination. I'll feel a lot of stool in their colon when I'm palpating them, but most of the time I need to do an x-ray. The x-ray is really important for documenting how severe the constipation is and to make sure there's no pelvis problems or other issues that are causing the constipation. I also want to do some basic blood work, and that's just to check the kidney and liver function, the salt balance, and the overall hydration status of your cat. Now, check out the other episode on constipation in cats to learn how we treat constipation. I'll briefly summarize it, but it's basically fluids to help hydrate your cat, which increases water to the colon, changing your cat's diet gradually to a higher fiber of what we call a low residue diet that can help bulk up the fecal content and help expel that from the colon and potential laxatives or enemas. Now, there are some laxatives you can use over the counter, like Miralax or Metamucil, but you don't want to start these without talking to your vet, but these can be extremely helpful. There's some prescription medications like sticky lactulose. It's super sticky, super sweet, so it's a little bit harder to get into a cat as compared to Miralax, but that's a great option too. In severe cases of constipation, we'll oftentimes give enemas in the veterinary hospital or even at the ER vet. Now, I've had some cat owners who've had to battle constipation or even megacolon, and it's quite a pain to be able to treat. And it can become expensive if you're going into your ER vet for enemas or even what we call deobstipation, where we manually try to get that feces out. I've had some well-intentioned cat owners who administer products that can be really poisonous to cats and even small dogs. So now I want to talk about fleet enemas. But before we do, let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Here is an alarming statistic. More than two thirds of dogs and cats have oral health disease by the age of three. And one of the indicators is bad breath. Do your pets have a healthy mouth? Do you cringe when it's time for a kiss or a snuggle? Let's get to the cause. Harmful bacteria in their mouth. And bad breath is just the start. The bad bacteria cause tartar and oral disease, which can lead to serious overall health problems. It's critical to make sure your pet's oral health is the best it can be, as good dental health is key to optimizing their overall health. Now, good news! It's easy and affordable to improve their oral health with Probiora Pet. Just one scoop of this dental care probiotic mixed into their food daily floods the mouth with positive bacteria, which crowds out the bad. This means better oral health and fresher breath. Probiora Pet is an all-natural dental care probiotic. It's odor and taste-free, so your pets will still enjoy their chow. We want to keep your pets healthy. During National Pet Oral Health Month, our listeners can save 10%. Go to ProBiorapet.com and use PLR10 at checkout. That's ProBiorapet.com. Use PLR10 at checkout to save 10%. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. We've been talking about constipation in cats and how we diagnose it, what signs your cat's going to show, how you can simply treat it by maintaining your cat's hydration, feeding some more canned food, potentially using over-the-counter or prescription medications. Now we're going to talk about what you should not do. Please, when it comes to your cat's rectums, please, cat owners, leave your cat rectums alone. When it comes to cat rectums, that's something you want your veterinarian doing. I don't want you giving enemas at home because once in a while, I'll see a really well-intentioned pet owner who reaches for a really deadly enema. They're really well-intentioned. They go to the local grocery store and they pick up an enema, which they think they can use in a human, but once in a while, it can be deadly. I'm talking specifically about two types of enemas, what I call fleet enemas or saline enemas. 
Now, keep in mind that one fleet enema, which contains phosphate, sodium phosphate, or saline, can be deadly to cats and small dogs. So you never want to use these without talking to a veterinarian or the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center first. So why are fleet enemas poisonous? Well, when you use them, they're totally safe in humans. But unfortunately, in smaller creatures like small dogs and cats, these fleet enemas can actually increase the osmolality in the colon. What that's supposed to be doing is actually drawing more free water into the colon in order to fix the high osmolality. In other words, you may be giving these things like high amounts of salt in the, into the colon, and it's supposed to pull more water in there. But unfortunately, this ends up resulting in poisoning in cats and small dogs. Ideally, that extra water going into the colon is supposed to make the stool softer and relieve the constipation, but instead, fleet enemas end up poisoning cats and small dogs. If your cat was just given a fleet enema, they may show signs of sudden collapse, vomiting, severe dehydration, weakness, bloody diarrhea, acute death, and severe life-threatening salt changes. What fleet enemas or saline enemas end up doing is they cause a really high sodium, a really high phosphorus, and really low levels of calcium and potassium. Most of the time, by the time I see a fleet enema poisoning in the ER, it's way too late to be able to decontaminate these patients. Now, in this situation, what I usually do is I will sedate a cat, depending on how weak or lethargic they are, and I will give warm water enemas. And the goal of doing that is to help flush out that remaining fleet enema if a cat owner gave that fleet enema in the few hours before they came in. The next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to get an IV catheter in and get some blood work. This blood work is going to be expensive because we're going to have to monitor the electrolytes and the salt balance almost every four to six hours. I'm going to start your cat or your small dog on really aggressive intravenous fluids with the goal being that we're trying to flush out that extra sodium. I'll also use medications that we call phosphate binders, like aluminum hydroxide. I'm going to give this orally to help bind up the extra phosphorus in the intestinal tract. Most importantly, I have to monitor your cat's calcium really carefully. These cats end up getting a really low calcium in response to having a really high phosphorus. In other words, their electrolytes are so out of whack that I can see signs of twitching, seizuring, or even fine muscle tremors because the calcium levels are so low. Now, your vet should not be automatically reaching for IV calcium because that can actually make your cat's kidneys more damaged. Some cats will develop secondary acute kidney failure from fleet enemas. So ultimately, I know all of this sounds really scary. The safest thing you can do if your cat is showing signs of constipation is to get to a veterinarian. And with constipation, the sooner you recognize it, the less expensive it's going to be to treat. With mild cases, sometimes I can just give fluids under the skin, anti-vomiting medications, different types of dietary changes. I can give Miralax or other over-the-counter medications. I can even give one enema and have your cat go home with that. And those are usually just warm water enemas. But in really severe cases, when the constipation is really severe, we oftentimes have to hospitalize for 48 to even 36 hours. Now with fleet enema, that ends up being different. If I see a fleet enema poisoning, again, when an owner has given an enema to their cat at home, this whacks out the electrolytes and salt balance so much. Most of these cats or small dogs are hospitalized for at least 48 hours. And it's usually at an overnight emergency clinic where there's 24 hour care. That's how deadly fleet enemas can be. So when in doubt, leave your cat's rectums alone, never give anything, even prescription or over the counter without talking to your vet, your emergency vet, or the ASPC Animal Poison Control Center for more information. When in doubt, there are safer animas that we veterinarians are gonna be giving. Sometimes it's just warm water mixed with some lubrication or mixed with some lactulose. But again, you never want to administer one at home without making sure that it's safe for your pet. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me your pet questions at drjustine at 
PetLifeRadio.com. With that, we're out of time, and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.